All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and to some more buckshot slash predator testing. This is one of those in-between type of tests with a load that's very, very interesting and has given us some killer performance so far. And with the choke we have out here today to run that shell through, I think we could see some absolutely ridiculous results, even more so than what we already have. So it's definitely gonna be pretty interesting to see what happens. And as for the shells we've got out here today, big thank you to Keith and the guys at Salt Creek for sending some of these over. I'm not paid or sponsored or anything by them. They just make a good shell and wanted to see me try some so those shells are some of these the salt creek triple threat shells these ones in particular are the 12 gauge three inch two ounce payload of tss t shot moving about 1250 feet per second so with them being tss t's they're packing a lot of energy down there i mean you're well in the buckshot territory with that kind of a payload and these shells have given us some really really nasty and impressive results so far if you haven't seen it i'll leave the card above here for last week week's test when we ran these through a modified choke they were nothing short of devastating to put it lightly so what can they do through today's choke that's going to be the big question and as for the setup we've got to run them through today i brought out the remington 1187 here but for a choke i went with something a little bit interesting here it's been a good long while since we've tested this particular choke on the channel but this is an avian x crusher waterfowl choke it's their light modified mid-range style choke and it does have their style of porting and their straight rifling in the choke as well so with it being a ported straight rifled light modified choke how is it going to do with these triple threat shells we've seen a lot of really good performances out of avian x chokes in the past but this one's a little bit interesting for a shell like this it's more than capable of handling that type of shell it's only a light modified constriction so we're definitely not over constricted but how are these shells going to play with the porting and the straight rifling i expect to see some pretty nasty results today but with this being a pretty interesting style of choke we just don't know until we try it but as for today's test everything is set up the same as we usually do it for these buckshot predator style patterns i've got the big sheet of paper at 40 yards i've got the chronograph so we can get our velocity and i've got the templates that we can lay up over the target for the reference point as to how they would have done in some more real life scenarios so enough talking let's go over here and take this shot and see just what kind of results we can get from these triple threat tsst's through this avian x light modified waterfowl choke all right so that round gave us 1162 through the chrono the boss claim is 1250 but this is very much normal for what we have been seeing out of these shells is mid 1100 range and to be honest i think that's pretty much right where these shells should kind of want to live and with them being tsst's that's going to be more than enough energy down at 40 yards for whatever you would ever use them for but what kind of a pattern did we actually get down there at 40 yards let's go check it out and see what it gave us all right, now we're down here at our 40 yard paper and this is what we got. And this is very interesting, I gotta say. Initially, I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying, hey, that's a great pattern. However, based on what we had previously seen through both the stock improved cylinder and stock modified out of that 1187 with these shells, this is the worst pattern so far. And still, it is a very, very usable pattern. It is much more open than what we had previously seen, but still a nice, even and dense spread throughout the main core area of the pattern that's going to hammer whatever is in that central area of the pattern that you're hitting with it and for a size reference the paper is 36 inches wide by probably about 40 to 42 inches tall and we definitely had probably close to a 34 or so inch spread left to right there definitely a lot more open than what we had previously seen out of those other two chokes we had a total of 47 pellets actually hit the piece of paper but overall here there's no question that either the porting or more than likely the straight rifling in that avian x light modified definitely played a role in the pattern we saw here because it's nowhere near as tight as what we had seen through both a little bit more open and a little bit tighter choke still a great pattern i think it would be perfect for those running coyotes and stuff gives you a little bit more leeway to work with but this particular combination might not be the deer or hog hunting pattern that we had seen previously but let's throw a couple templates up and just get a better reference as to how this pattern actually performed 
Okay, here's our 10 inch circle. And when we line it up with what is roughly our core area here, we had about 14 or 15 pellets within a 10 inch circle. With TSSTs, that is gonna absolutely hammer whatever's inside of there. But that's about half of what we had previously seen through the improved cylinder and modified choke tests that we did. So you can definitely tell that it's a little bit more broad and open than the previous results, but still that's not bad considering the rest of the size of the pattern. But now is where I would normally throw the deer template up there. I think based on the pattern that we have here, it's a little bit too open for deer. You're going to have pellets kind of scattered throughout most of the body, which would still get it done. But I think we're going to throw the hog template up here for a better reference as to those slightly smaller animals, the coyote, fox, hog type of range, because I think this pattern is more akin to that style hunting than deer hunting. So let's throw the hog template up and take a look at that. Okay, and here's that hog template. And as you can see, you would have absolutely hammered that hog. But the spread of the pellets definitely covers the vast majority of them, which I think really lends itself to stuff like coyote hunting with these. Or maybe even something like bobcats would be great with these as well. For a predator that is slightly smaller than this hog template here, that might be on a jog or something, that's going to give you a nice amount of leeway all the way out to 40, 50, 60 yards and still have plenty of pellets and energy to get the job done so overall as for results here definitely very interesting and not exactly what i expected to see this is the most open pattern we've seen with these shells so far but it is far from a terrible pattern as well this is absolutely usable for those coyote hunts and stuff like that so if you prefer a little bit more leeway and want to use a shell like this for those predator hunts this combination would do a fantastic job but i think if you want to deer hunt with this type of a shell a standard nothing fancy fancy factory or flush mount style improved cylinder to modified choke is kind of probably right where you want to be at. It's going to give quite a bit tighter of a pattern than what this combo did. So definitely some nice results today. That's not a pattern we can complain about one bit, but it's not exactly what I expected to see either. Okay, and here's the wad from that shell, and as you can see, it is nothing really all that fancy, but it is a little bit more banged up than what we had seen previously. And you can definitely see those stripes right down the wad here, if I get it in the light and at an angle just right. Those are from the straight rifling in that choke. Yeah, you can really see them right here. So I definitely think that played a big part in the, the performance we saw today. This one pedal opened a little farther than the rest, but it doesn't really look like it snagged on anything. But there's nothing stuck down in there except the little cork piece they used and overall there's no real major damage to the wad i think the results we saw today are just a fact of this particular style of loading going through a ported and straight rifle choke the constriction we know should have been pretty good so definitely some very interesting results but i think the wad did what it was supposed to do if nothing else all right, y'all. Well, what do you think about that result right there? Definitely not really what I expected to see coming into this. I figured we were going to see a pretty nice, hot, tight pattern. But that's why you test certain setups, because that is a little bit different and a little bit interesting style of a choke that we didn't really know how it was going to do until we tested it. But at the end of the day, that is still a fantastic pattern. I think it's just more akin to your coyote style hunting than deer hunting or something. We've seen some really tight patterns with these shells previously, but that one i wouldn't be scared in the slightest to predator hunt with that so definitely a very interesting result out of today's combination that's for sure but as always leave your thoughts in the comments is that about what you expected to see were you a little surprised one way or the other have you tested any of these salt creek triple threat shells or have you tested anything like this through an avian x crusher light modified waterfowl choke and if so what kind of results have you seen and would you hunt with that kind of a pattern and if so what would you take it out there after let me know all that down below but with that being said i've I've got some more testing to get done for you guys so i'm going to get back to it as always we have the channel instagram as well as the mailbox where you can send stuff if you'd like all that information will be in the description if you're interested in it but i'm going to get back to it so i'll see y'all in the next one